Hey guys! We're here today to check out the latest video single from Cradle of Filth. They have a new album coming out. The name of the song is Crawling King Chaos. This title is 2Ks away from being an absolute shit show. Now, I have to say this before we press play. The title of the upcoming record is nothing short of genius. You know, there's the famous line from Star Trek, resistance is futile. So they did a play on words from that and they went with existence is futile. Like when, when you think about the pandemic, when you think about where we are in this world today, could you have come up with a better title for a record? I don't think so. I, I don't know how the album sounds like. I haven't heard anything from this record whatsoever. This is going to be my first taste of what the album sounds like. Yeah. But as far as winning the most creative, best title for a record in 2020, I don't know if that award exists, but if it does, they're running with it. They're yeah, using won. Bolt with that title of that record. Absolutely phenomenal. Doesn't get much better than that. Now, be, once again, before I click play, I have a joke. Uh, do you know what happened to the street walker in Venice? Oh, fuck. What? She drowned. Yeah. This is church now. A seismic paradigm shift to chaos! <laughs> Oh, 
it looks like the guy from Star Wars. Emperor Palpatine? Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> like when he's all dried up Probably and like, like he's all pruning. Huh? Like the nun. No, no. The nun, the nun look a little bit more invigorating. He totally looks like Palpatine. Yeah. Like, after, you know, Palpatine looks like he's been in the in the sauna for far too long. And that's exactly how this dude looks like. Yeah. All right, I'm going to let you go first because I have so many things to say about this track. But what's your take on this brand new Cradle of Filth? Oh, I mean... I think one of the things I wanted to touch on right as it happened was the vocals. It sounded like he was speaking into a fan. Did you, did you, the ones that were like, I don't know where you're going with this and I'm starting to get worried. Why? What do you mean speaking into a fan? You know, when you speak into a fan, it, no, I don't know. Cause I've never done that. You never, when you were, Oh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to even touch on that. Like, why would I speak into a fan? Listen, when I was younger and oh. it was hot and I was at school, kids would go up to the fan and speak in the fan cause it makes your voice sound different. Okay, I didn't. Right, know. It, it chops up your voice a little bit. There was a piece, there, and there, there was, was a, a piece, piece there, there that the voice that felt. the voice was chopping up. Yeah, but it was meant to do that, and that's what it reminded me of of when I was uh, I was um, a wee little lad. A wee little lad, okay. And I used to speak into fans as a as a kid and have my voice sound like that, and that's what it sounded like to me. So that's the first thing you wanted to touch on. But that was one of the things I wanted to touch on when it happened. The background female vocals were amazing. Adding, you know, this, this cinematic, the opera cinematic feel. feel that this song was drenched in the cinematic, creepy, churchy vibe that this whole song had, and I felt those were one of the main components for it was those uh, background female vocals and the keyboards and the, and the keyboards, yeah, the mixture of the two. I I, I like the fact that the, vo the 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 female vocals were almost used more as an atmospheric element than anything else because they added that cinematic vibe. They made the song feel a little bit bigger. They gave more layers to the track and, and they gave this, and then when you mix the keyboards with it, that, that kind of church sound uh, a keyboard going in, it just makes the song feel alive. It just gives a, a little bit, gives a little bit more meat on the bone. If you look at the way the whole song is put together, uh, that to me was one of the highlights of the track. Because it was always there. Yeah. Sometimes a little bit more noticeable. Sometimes would drop a little bit. But I felt like... It was always there. In, in, okay, maybe you, uh, if you look at the song from beginning to end, maybe it's not always there. But the sense that you get at the end is that it's, it was always there. Yeah. There's a sense of being consistent. Even though it's not f in the forefront for most of it, it's still in it the still back. It still feels like it's there. in the background. Yeah, yeah, so the perception that you have at the end of the track is it's that it was always, always there. there. Yeah. That was always there. So I, I really like how they did that and how they added that to the song. The drums on this track are phenomenal. So much power, but at the same time, not overpowering everything else that's happening. It's just creating this really balanced uh, spinal cord to the song that everything else then you kind of build and you add to it. Yeah, it's the, like the song frame kind of, of a puzzle and everything else is just... Yeah, everything, all the other pieces are just kind of going within that frame. The drums are really framing the way this song is put together. And I love that. And I love that because everything else really feels on top of it. The drums don't feel like they're kind of going over the borders. They're not overpowered. They, they're just they're really controlled, and I love that from from the beginning all the way to the end. The guitar is heavy, really pushing the song forward. The vocals always giving you something new. I was leaving the vocals for last because it, because I feel like they need they need to be addressed on their own. Yeah. Uh, but I really like the guitar sound on this track. I really like some of some moments. The song feels more symphonic, but there's also other moments where the song picks up a little bit of more heaviness it's and it feels speed. more power and speed, and that is coming with the guitar. So I really like the guitar sound on the track. Now, Cradle of Filth has never been a band that I've been fully engaged with. I've seen them live. I went to see them last time they played in Toronto with Ginger. That was the first time that Ginger ever played in Toronto, so I was at that show. But I've never really been on the Cradle of Filth bandwagon i'm perhaps going to lose my portuguese citizenship because i'm saying this because they're so big in portugal they're one of the biggest like if you're a metal fan in portugal and you're not a fan of cradle of filth your your metal head card is getting revoked like immediately there are definitely a bunch of uh, cradle of filth cover bands in portugal really yeah you have a vast knowledge of, of what you're saying definitely you okay. know crib of disgust <laughs> That would, one of the many that would make that, that would by the way that would be a total cool ass amazing cover, cover band, band for cradle of yeah, I, I love that discuss I, I'm, I'm down with that uh so having said that while i've never been necessarily on the cradle of filth bandwagon i just never i don't know for one reason i i, I like a song here and a song there but i haven't really been a huge fan of the band 
in, 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 as my fellow countrymen are, right? So let me just put that out there. So this song, I, I, I came into this song with a little bit of trepidation. Like because like I said, I'm, like... I like some of their tracks, but really few and far in between. Like I, I, I've never really gravitated towards their sound and mostly because of, of Danny's vocals. I, I, once again, I'm totally losing my metalhead card for this, yeah. but I'm being honest. I'm just, I've never really been 100% engaged with them. I thought his vocal performance on this song because the, the, the symbiosis of the sound, of the atmosphere, those female vocals in the background, the piano, the, the bass line of the drums, the way the guitarist kind of brought it all together, his vocals were absolutely perfect. It, it fit in the puzzle. It Perfectly. It, th there was a, a round hole and with a round peg. You were not trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. It was just like, you know, perfect. And then when he starts going in into into his full range and using some of those speaking vocals there. Yeah. Like he was not... Like the spoken word. The spoken word piece there. I was like, you got me here. Yeah. Like this is absolutely amazing. This track is so big. Has so much sound. There's so many things for you to like break down. You can break down this. You can break down that. The vocals, this, the... the it's, it's just such an incredible large song. And it, the, the vocals kind of kept you in there because... Of all the, chain, the, the changes he was making. Be I felt musically the song is actually pretty linear. There's not like, it's not a song that has like ebbs and but flow. For him is, he's in making the ebbs and flows. He's doing the changes. He's yeah. doing the changes. He's creating the differences, the dynamic. He's giving the song life. He's the puppet master. He's pulling the strings. He's just master with his, of puppets. Just with his voice. Well, on this song he was totally riding the lightning all the way through. From beginning all the way to the end. By the end he had killed them all. Killed yeah. them all. Fuck. That was really, that was a nice... Uh... And then, not only he killed them all, he makes me want to reload the song and listen to it again. Okay, I think that's the farthest we can go with I, this. I, okay. Because yeah, that last one was good, but... Alright, I, I, I was going to throw a couple more in there. No, 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 no. Well, right now I'm hardwired to self-destruct oh, after I listen fuck. to this song. That was... Fuck. It's going to be a little bit of a death magnetic, if you will, but... Oh, it is dude! Really nice. Fuck, no, no, I feel like I need to continue. But anyways, okay, that's the last pun. That's the last Metallica pun. I, I just absolutely loved his voice on this song, how it interacted with the track, how the track moved. It was flawless. It was just, this is a track that has such a large sound from the beginning all the way to the end, all the way to the end. And a huge piece of that is those female vocals, that keyboard, like all of that stuff. And then he's just in the middle, like, you know, Throwing those ripples, like you have the big pond, right? And he's throwing those that stone in the middle of the pond, creating a few ripples here and there. Phenomenal. I'm really excited. I don't think I've ever been excited for a Cradle of Filth album. Once again, I'm losing my uh, metalhead card here. But I'm really excited about this album. I'm excited because of the title of the record. Absolutely amazing. And this song, if you're going to pick a single to really showcase what the, what the album is going to be about, this single has me. Like, you got me with this single. And this is coming from somebody, like I said, I'm not a, I, I appreciate the band, like I appreciate what they do, but I've never really been. You were more of the, for the musical side, you were more there, the vocal side, you were. The vocal side, I've always had a hard time. It was gravitating. Yeah, like some songs I really digged it, and then some songs I felt a little bit uncomfortable with it. So I, I've never been 100% on the Cradle of Filth bandwagon. But this song, I, fuck, I, like I said. I can't remember the last time I heard one of their songs that I was this excited about the song and this excited about listening to it again. Fuck, I really, I really dig it. So for a guy that's perhaps, as far as this band goes, I'm a little bit on the periphery, like I'm a little bit on the outside, this song has me coming a little bit closer in. So it, it, to use an analogy of being in a concert, if, if, if I was all the way at the back of the venue, this song kind of got me at least in, the, in the periphery of the mosh pit. Yeah. I'm at least in, in, in that area there, you know, before things get a little bit aggravated. I, I'm right there. So kudos to them. Yeah. You know, fuck. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm done with this. Crawling King Chaos. Yeah, I've, ne I've never had a problem with the vocals, for, personally for me, on them. But I've always been kind of... All right, the battery died. Sad but true. Yeah. We're here. And, uh, well, one more pun. I got one more Fuck. pun in. So, you know, that, that one, I didn't even notice it. You didn't notice until I said I there was a pun there. That one. 
So what can I say? Uh, I'm getting really good at this. Yeah. Anyway, it, it's it's unforgiven the fact that you didn't get that pun. So let, let me just add one more into Fuck. the mix. I hope the battery dies again. <laughs> well, then we'll have to reload. Now I use that same pun you twice. Use the same fucking pun <laughs> twice. All right. So you you were saying when the battery died that you the vocals the, they've never been a problem to you. Cradle of Filth as a band has never been. It's one of those bands that I'll listen to, but it won't you know hit the playlist right. It's just. If it's on, it's on. If you it's listen. on, it's on. Yeah, yeah. But this song has got it got me into it. I mean, in the same way as you, I'm at the back of the venue. This song comes on. I'm moving more towards the front. Yeah, it's just the sound that it has, and then how his vocals interact with that cinematic feel of the track. That that's what sold me. Yeah, his voice was Cause, incredible cause on for this me, track. The vocals. I always felt that the vocals were were fitting the song. It's just that at the time when I used to listen to them, it was not my thing. Right, I would. Yeah, maybe I'm a little bit more into into this specific sound too now, now than I was like a couple yeah, of years ago. Yeah, exactly. Back. So my my taste why. has changed. So mine as well. I feel like the last time I listened to them, I wasn't I my mean, palate wasn't ready for them. No, you were listening to too much power metal. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, like if for you at that time, if it wasn't Sabaton, it was not good. Yeah. So maybe you, you you're changing with the times. You're yeah. getting a little bit older, a little bit wiser. All right, guys, this is it for this video. Come back tomorrow. We'll have more videos for you. All right, take care. See ya.